a tattoo is to have a lifetime reminder. We welcome back John Miller, who uh, covers the police and the fire department for us and has for so long. John, you, you know an awful lot of firefighters, and because we're talking about firefighters there, a lot of them do feel guilty, don't they? They do, and I mean, you talk to regular folks and they say, boy, I was lucky, that could have been me. A lot of firefighters I spoke to had the opposite feeling. They mm. said, you know, that should have been me instead of him, especially the ones, and this is very common in the New York City Fire Department, who had traded shifts with um, brother officers that day. There was a lot of that. Mm. You may not know this, I don't, but we, we, I, I know that a lot of firefighters have not gone back to work for various health reasons. And I don't know the numbers in the police. I think there's more than 700 firefighters have not gone back for that reason. Do you know of a lot in either the fire department or the police department have not gone back because they are still too disturbed by the whole thing? I know a lot who have gone back and then had to leave um, saying, I thought I could do it, but I couldn't do it. I also know um, that from the police side, they're retiring in droves this year um, mm. at a much higher rate than before. Mm. Well, we're joined now by Dr. Joanne DeFady, who's the director of the trauma program at uh, the Weill Cornell Medical Center here in New York, and, and it falls on you for us today to answer these questions about post-traumatic stress, how much there is, how much there isn't. I see in the polls sometimes that people don't feel as depressed as they used to. First of all, in this instance, mm -hmm. what is post-traumatic stress? In this instance. Post-traumatic stress disorder is um, a well-defined syndrome of symptoms that can occur after one, perceive that one perceives that one's life is threatened. Uh, the symptoms include re-experiencing the event, having images very, which can often be very, very vivid pop into your mind. Um, they can be visual, they can be oral. Uh, for burn patients, they can be kinesthetic. You can feel your mm -hmm. skin burning. Uh, you can have flashbacks in which it feels like you're reliving the experience all over again. And you've seen all this this year. And we have most certainly seen that. Uh, does anybody escape unscathed? It's hard to answer. Mm. About Previous research suggests that about a third of people who went through the Oklahoma City bombing, for example, had post-traumatic stress disorder. There are three good studies that have come out that suggest that a similar percent will have post-traumatic stress disorder from the World Trade Center. But you're asking a broader question. The broader question is, is, is uh, can, a person, can, can a person escape without being unaffected? I don't think so. Mm. I think that uh, if they're fortunate and they don't have a psychological condition, their life is still transformed. Some of the people, mm -hmm. and just alluded to it in terms of talking about some of the firefighters and the policemen, some of the police and the people who've been through this experience here, New York, associated with Shankill, have been totally debilitated by it and not sure. been able to resume normal lives. Mm -hmm. Is that a larger or smaller percentage of the survivors? Hard to say. Again, uh, a hallmark symptom of PTSD is avoidance, avoiding anything that reminds you of the trauma. So people, for example, who can't go back to work, uh, a, it, there's a good a good educated guess would be that they mm. probably have post-traumatic stress disorder. Somebody said to me the other day, they were trying mm. to do an analysis of the spiritual mm -hmm. component of this in sure. the last year, they said that for, for Jews, mm -hmm. um, there was so much survivor guilt about the Holocaust, that the Holocaust was such a huge dimension mm -hmm. in Jewish life, mm -hmm. that it was almost hard to focus on this in some respects. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that? And could you talk to us just a bit about what we just so loosely call survivor guilt? Mm -hmm. I haven't met anyone who survived this who doesn't have a degree of survivor's really? guilt, so uh, I can't speak to that statement. It's such a broad statement. But it is a very common part of, a, of an experience such as this where you escape, a person escapes with their life, but a colleague, a friend, a family member doesn't. Uh, and a person is left with the question, well, why me? Why did I survive? Uh, why am I here? It, it, one usually asks oneself all sorts of existential questions. Mm. Um, we hear commonly stories where a person was supposed to be there that day mm. and they weren't, and someone else who mm. uh, was not supposed to be there was. Do, do you truly believe, I realize you're a professional, this is your craft, but do, do you really believe that, that anybody who's been associated with this should seek some treatment or at least go and consult about the possibility of treatment even at this date? Well, we're at the stage now where post-traumatic stress disorder would be chronic. And so if a person's having problems, I would most certainly suggest that they at least go to talk to someone once. Look at it like going to your family doctor for a checkup. If you have a cough, then you would go to your doctor. You wouldn't try and diagnose it yourself. Mm -hmm. But I think because we all have our own theory of human behavior and what is and isn't normal or appropriate, we often don't seek help when we should. It's a debilitating condition. 
uh, affects marriage, economic performance, work performance. And so if you're in any doubt, why not just go talk to someone once? Exactly. You know, Thanks, Dr. With yeah. Television commercials now on the assumption that people are not reaching out. Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, liberty.com exactly. or something. Mm -hmm. But the television commercials are focused on getting people to realize you need this help. It says there's right. nothing wrong with mm -hmm. getting better, urging people to come forward, really, thank for you counseling. Both. John Miller, Dr. DeFady, thank you very much mm -hmm. for this contribution. Um, I guess, as Dr. DeFady points out, in the early days after September 11th, for so many people, it was hard to believe that life would ever return to some sense of normalcy, but of course it does. And it is remarkable what can happen in a year. We've actually asked a lot of poll questions about this. Um, related to this particular conversation, a new ABC poll finds that only 29% of Americans say the attacks have changed how they live, and of those, 69% say the change is actually for the better. Here's ABC's Dean Reynolds. You can see the evidence at the Sears Tower in Chicago where the tourists are back on the observation deck of what may still be a terrorist target. And it's as clear at crowded movie theaters across the country, at the bustling casinos of Las Vegas, and on the highways packed with summer travelers. A public that was admonished repeatedly in the days after September 11th to go on about its business has essentially done just that. You have inside the brain, this little thing that remembers September 11th, remembers the vulnerability, and then this enormous orbital force of get on with your life, do the things you were doing before, enjoy yourself. Health surveys now show virtually no elevated levels of stress in the country, indicating that the year-old tragedy has receded to the back of the national mind. It's not part of my daily thought process anymore. It was immediately after, but not any longer. You know, life goes on. And the notion that the attack on America changed life here forever has been roundly debunked. At the MGM Mirage Casinos in Las Vegas, it's almost as if 911 never happened. All things considered, our rebound has been faster and stronger than I think anyone expected it to be. He's very cute. Six foot tall. At Great Expectations Dating Service, company president Mitchell Brandt says in the days after September 11th, there were serious searches for mates. The phone was ringing off the hook. We just had uh, an enormous number of phone calls, probably about five times what we normally get. Today, that urgency is gone. People are probably very, very close to where they were before. Let us pray to Places of worship experienced an upsurge of interest right after the attacks. Pastor Michael Noble of the Olivet Baptist Church in Chicago. I think that what happened to us was probably typical of uh, most churches in this country. And what happened was that the upsurge dissipated after two months or so. Do you feel that in some ways an opportunity was missed? Yes, I do. The profound impact that September 11th could have had is actually to awaken the conscience of America. To really, to really have us do this the more difficult job of reflecting upon what's really important to us. Really, there has been uh, virtually no lasting change in terms of people's religious behavior or beliefs. George Barna studies religious trends. We thought, well, this will probably be the thing that triggers some kind of ongoing religious change. So we were very surprised when we saw how quickly things reverted back to normal seasonal levels. Keep America rolling. How to handle the tragedy was a particular challenge to advertisers who immediately sensed that weaving patriotism into their pitches was the way to go. With the Ford Drives America program. But now, a year along, focus groups are signaling for something else. Enough with the patriotism. Uh, while it was nice initially and it was a way to rally around the flag, we're also hearing enough already, let's move on, it's time to, to move beyond that. Customer surveys suggest there's been a return of cynicism bred in part by a war on terror with no end in sight. This is a kind of invisible war against a seemingly invisible enemy fought by a handful of elite troops in a very distant place. And as the months have passed, many of the heightened security measures introduced last September have been scaled back. National Guardsmen are gone from the airports, patrols at major bridges and vital utility plants are seldom round the clock. I would have to say that, uh, you know, the priority seems to be lessened over a period of time. That side's secure. A year ago, Anderson, Indiana, took a number of new steps to protect its 60,000 residents from terrorists. Today, the city is still watchful, but hardly on edge. 
actually uh, our police departments have, are just maintaining their normal routine patrols at this point. Polls show there have been some lasting changes spurred by September 11th. A desire for closer family relationships, more pride in the country, and heightened concern that terrorism will return. But exactly where it's altered the country forever will be hard to pinpoint, perhaps because of the resilient nature of America and Americans. You have to live life. So otherwise, you know, it's trite, and people have said it since September 11th, they win. They've stopped our world, and you can't let that happen. Indeed, the biggest difference between then and now may be a greater resolve to show the country's adversaries that nothing they do can change it. Dean Reynolds, ABC News.